Welcome to Ralph's Flybox. Today we're going to tie a pattern that's uh, been with me a long, long time. It's the foam butt caddis, uh, but what I'm going to do is tie the original version. Uh, it was originally tied as a cricket or a terrestrial version uh, for trout and smaller sizes. It uh, did do exceptionally well on panfish and, uh, and on bass in warm water applications, so I've, I've moved more towards tying it on larger stinger hooks in a larger frame uh, but it still sits in my box every year and does very well uh, as a cricket pattern for me and uh, as a skating pattern as well so let's go over how I tie that smaller original version I start off with a size uh, 14 I tie it on a size 14 to 10 uh, dry fly hook um, this is a size 14 3XL I want that little bit of extra length and uh, we start off with black six dot tying thread. And we're going to start our thread and wrap a good base. We need some we need a good base to adhere that foam to. And then what I like to do at this point is apply small layer of Sally Henson's head cement and then spiral my thread over it to give it another counter wrapped layer of contact and we're going to start off with applying thin fly foam I believe this is two millimeter I'm not 100% certain the exact thickness but it is the thin version of it and we're gonna we taper that to a point and tie it in. We begin that two eye lengths back from the eye of the hook. Taper that foam to avoid any excess buildup where you're gonna tie in your hackle or your uh, your hair. We're gonna bring that foam back, staying on top of the hook, even with the point of the barb. You don't have to worry about the rest of that foam yet. That's gonna get bound down. Then you're gonna form a, a loop, a butt loop. It's going to be one and a half times the hook gap in length. And we'll secure that down. Now this will move around a little bit as you wrap this. So don't get too persnickety about how uh, where it's sitting at the moment. Then we're going to do loose wraps up to just short of the tie-in point. And give a couple wraps to keep it stationary somewhat and trim that off and we're going to take our tying thread and with no scientific method applied we're just going to bind down over that body get most of it bound down and work your way up doesn't have to be perfect yet work your way up to the, the point of your your loop next material you're going to tie in this is a size 14, so this is going to be a size 12, size 12 black hackle. It can be saddle, it can be neck. I use neck, just a lower grade neck hackle. You're going to trim it so that you have an elong elongated butt section. And you're going to trim the fibers, leaving some stubs. You want that to anchor that hackle. You're not going to reinforce this hackle. It stays put. You're going to tie that on the side of the body and wrap down over it. Like I said, this doesn't get reinforced. However, I really never have any hackle come loose. And you're going to bring your thread forward and bind down that body fairly level. Doesn't have to be perfect. And you're going to stop again two eye lengths short. Next step is to take your hackle pliers you're going to palmer that hackle forward I like to put one or two full wraps right in front of the butt and you palmer it forward they're not touching like a sixteenth of an inch or or so just an even gap between palmer you're going to bring that up the tie-off portion of that foam. 
And when you get to the end, I do two wraps in place, just like I did in the beginning. And then you're going to tie it off. And trim your hackle. And then at each step in this fly, I follow up with it. Each stage, I give a quick two wrap whip finish. A lot of moving parts are manipulating it a lot, so and a lot of things that can move, rubber and, and whatnot, foam. The next step you're going to do is you're going to tie in your leg. You only have a single leg on either side. You're going to take a, a micro size. Uh, brown centipede hackle and you're going to fold it around your your thread just break it in half basically and you're going to bring your the rubber legs up on top and do a wrap in front and then you're going to grab that hackle in a bite right behind the end of that loop you're going to lock that loop in place and again, don't worry too much about whether it's perfect yet or not. And you can pull it into place as you put some security wraps in there. As long as you get it close, you're good for now. And then again, two-turn whip finish. Oop, I grab that rubber leg, get that out of there. and you can reposition a little bit. And the last material you're going to tie in is a stacked section of gray or dun elk hair. You're going to do this about you're going to size your stack about the same size as you would if it was a, this was a size 14 elk hair caddis. A nice stacked clump. You're going to measure it from the behind the eye to the end of the foam butt and you're going to tie it in right in front of the legs I like to cinch it down get them flaring a little bit secure it and then I grab the front sweep back some locking wraps and then I come back to behind the head this has to be a durable fly you don't want that head spinning and I wrap down a couple more times and then bring it back to the front again might seem like a little overkill but uh, it works then once I get it securely in place, I'm going to do a quick whip finish. Sweep it back again. And lock it down. We're going to grab our head. Sweep everything up. And trim it off. And last but not least, you're going to trim these legs. I don't stretch them, but I trim them to where they come to the bend of the hook. Trim the first one and get the second one. You want them splayed slightly down if possible. 
and then I flip it over it looks like I got a couple hackles a couple hairs that are straight and I'll trim them now since I'm gonna apply head cement and I like to put my head cement with the brush a heavy dot of it at the throat seems to be the best spot to lock everything in place all these synthetic materials make sure I didn't occlude the eye and there it is the original foam butt caddis this is my only cricket pattern that I tie does very well um, I fish it as a terrestrial in the summertime and warm water applications I will skitter this across flat pools and I get some really explosive strikes for trout uh, again you can find it tied in warm water fashion elsewhere on my site in a larger in a larger variety it is hands down one of my best warm water patterns as well uh, hope this adds to your box good luck see you on the water